live in kind of an invisible exoskeleton of data and interconnectedness. And everything we do, everything we touch, is part of the web of interconnectedness of all things. How vulnerable are things in America? Who are they vulnerable to? Could just anyone out there with a desire to wreak havoc just go do that? It is a terrorist attack. It's the type of terrorist attack that this world hasn't really seen yet. We're trying to find out the clues, the fingerprints, like forensics, but in cyber. Liaise with them? We go head to head with the Chinese on their cyber intrusion every day. Not a bad idea to be face to face working with them. We need a man named Hathaway. What do we know about this guy? He's a convicted hacker serving 15 years. Genius coder. If we want to move around within this code, looking for clues to the hacker's identity, we need Nicholas Hathaway. A small liaison group was put together with a Chinese network engineer, Tang Wei, her brother, who works in cyber defense within the PLA an FBI agent, Viola Davis, and a convicted black hat hacker who has unusual expertise, and that's Hathaway. So someone had to physically enter this room, plug the virus in. We did a few months of computer lessons, I mean, that was kind of the number one thing for me to wrap my head around or, you know, get skillful with. Right, this is the code for our rat. See, it's compact, it's slick under a mag, you would never picked up on it. We worked on how hackers speak, how they carry themselves. You know, how do they type, what does it sound like, how they address a computer. This section of his code right here is a mess. There's 25 lines, he's left text, where they notes to himself. Dead in ideas. Maybe he's still writing. He's busy writing code for what's next. There can be some hints to who does what by the types of, I would call them artifacts that are in the code, the choices that they make when they write code. It's very creative. It's a it's sort of a combination of, of creative and logic. When you're the composer, when you're the architect, you take pride in the work that you do, in the elegance of it or the economy of the code. And, and everyone will, will write in a different way. So sometimes they put a, you know, a shout out to someone in a comment to the code, and that's just plain text. You know, that's saying, hey, I wrote this. There's a way of speaking or writing that is specific to that subculture and that kind of decentralization of trust in those kinds of social networks where they're not going to talk to you unless you've been vetted by someone they trust. And there's also a certain amount of competitiveness Three accounts. Wire transfers to Macau Casino. They're cashing out. We're going to check out. Who is a black hat hacker? Come on, come on. And what's his action? What's the exalted experience for him? The purely mental adventure of projecting something you want to do to be able to extend himself through the internet through the abstraction of one and zeros and being able to have a kinetic effect someplace else in the world. You're causing something in the physical material world to happen because of your ability to manipulate code. He hit four major banks, ran up 46 million in damages, and that's just what we know about. You want the DOJ to do anything other than laugh? PLCs? What we're seeing and what we're dealing with in this film is the ability of hackers to go from the world of, of pure information into the world of you know, what they call the kinetic world. The computer components that control pumps, 
the electric grid, and anything that operates in the physical world, that sort of thing. Black hat hackers penetrate places they're not supposed to go. The first thing you find out is that the stereotype's all wrong. They're not just a lot of middle-class, skinny little white kids. It's Alberto Gonzalez. It's Stephen Watt, who's a seven-foot-tall, weightlifting, brainiac, surfer-type looking guy. It's everybody. Ready, in. Action behind the gate. Hathaway's trajectory is actually common. If you look at the life stories of the top 10 hackers in the last 10 years, some of them haven't had formal education, became hackers, did time, and now they're teaching at MIT, it's computer sciences, it's all over the place. Hacking is fun. It's like getting involved in a really good chess game. Combined with being a real cat and mouse game with an opponent and having some risk involved, so there's an adrenaline rush as well. It's a very potent combination. When you're hacking, there's kind of an opiated feedback loop, and you lose sense of time, and you're totally immersed in the world you're in. We had various people working with us. Kevin Paulson, former hacker who did five years in prison, is now an editor at Wired Magazine. It was hacking the phone company, but because I worked for a defense contractor, the FBI, began treating it as a national security investigation. I went on the run, used my phone company access to cheat at radio station phone-in contests so I could make sure I was the right caller to win $30,000 in cash or a car. I was in probably eight different jails over the course of the five years. And it ranged from being surrounded by mostly white-collar criminals to sometimes being surrounded by more violent criminals or, in, in a couple of cases, uh, murder defendants. Um, so it was a very... I got, I got a little bit of everything. Michael found me because of a project I did hacking a dating website. I didn't actually break any laws. I just reverse-engineered it, and I ended up going on a lot of dates, you know, as a result of it. I think on the basis of that, I started tutoring Chris and some of the areas of computer science that were relevant to the film. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that later. So listen, what's the coolest thing you've hacked into? You know, tell me a story. How can you do this? And it was all the kind of illegal things that we'd end up discussing. <laughs> Come on, they got the keys to the kingdom. Our guy's address, maybe. Whatever he's cooking up next is right in there. Only we can't read it. Let's go. You locate this guy, you're okay. You get discovered, you're dead meat. You know that, don't you? You asked him to change his password? Phishing, that's something that Hathaway is supposedly very good at. If I can get you to click on a link, that's great. If I can get you to click on like a PDF, that's even better, that's great. When he downloaded the PDF, what he downloaded was the key logger because then I can put a piece of software on your computer. And now I'm in your computer. Got it. I tend to be attracted to newly developing ways we live our lives. And when something as seismic as the digital age is upon us and it changes the nature and fabric of everything, that's very interesting to me. There are very few pieces of technology that actually do change us. Printing press is one, computers and the internet are another. Look at this, 53 PLCs, five different tin mines. When I get interested in a subject like this, I want to find out all I can about it. That takes me into a series of meetings that I set up with people who are expert in it, folks at the Department of Homeland Security, FBI. Mike Rogers is running the That's Congressional right. Intelligence That's Committee. That, that malware was on those systems. Do the lights go out? Do we stop pumping water? Does that mean they already had the capability to flip the switch if they wanted to? There shouldn't be any doubt in our minds that there are nation states and groups out there that have the capability to do that, to enter our systems and to shut down our basic infrastructure. He was very, very active and very, very early about warning about the threat of cyber intrusions, particularly into defense industries, technology, the appropriation of intellectual property. 
mainly from China. Report, uh, the Mandiant report attributed to the Chinese government, hackers being on our, some of our critical infrastructure systems. Is there any other nation state? There is more than one nation set out there that we watch that we believe has these capabilities. It's a kind of cold war. All the sides have gotten very good at it. So we, the US, hack China and we hack Russia. And really we hack to some degree almost every country on Earth. And China and Russia hack us as well. Everybody involved is developing highly engineered pieces of malicious software uh, and people that work full time doing nothing but refining that code. We take your shots at her the Lee Ran Jin Da Kala Home. It's been fairly well established that the Chinese People's Liberation Army has task force the size of a small software company whose main purpose is to get inside of networks and stay there. The story we heard was always the same story, that the American public has no idea how porous we are. From our water to our power to our financial segment to the aviation industry, just as examples. Anybody who's smart enough with a fast enough computer can get into any of it with complete anonymity and impunity. He's got 74 million in cash. He's writing code. What for? He stood here, right here, and looked at this. A black hat hacker, he wants to make something happen. And the larger that thing is, the more gratification there is. Here's the money from Chicago, deposited into a local bank, Bank Centra Agatas. Hacking is completely international now. These are not hackers in their parents' basements. These are professionals. It's anybody, any guy sitting on a sofa anywhere in the world. He could be in Estonia, he could be in Lagos, Mumbai, any place. It's as if we are living in a house and all the doors and windows are open and it's a very dangerous neighborhood, but we don't know it. I can target anyone, anything, anywhere. There are no secrets anymore.